These dragon boat racers, pickleball and soccer players, master swimmer, mountain climber, and I, an Olympic gold medalist, all have something in common, cancer. We're all survivors, not weekend warriors, not professional athletes, and we're actively moving through cancer. Surprisingly, only about 15% of cancer patients are told that exercise is medicine. That's a staggering small number, a fact that flies in the face of robust science. Hi, I'm Scott Hamilton, and for those of you who don't know me, I was blessed to be able to win four U.S. championships, four world championships, and an Olympic gold medal in ice skating. I also toured for 20 years and was blessed to be able to cover nine Olympic games for television. I'm also a cancer survivor and a three-time brain tumor survivor. Here's what I've learned. A cancer journey is different for every single person that goes through it. But the one thing that we all share is you have to have strength, courage, a lot of laughter throughout it. I never want to give cancer anything it wants. In fact, I only want to give it what it doesn't like. And exercise is top of that list. I thought that people who go to the gym was people that they didn't have anything else interesting to do. 20 years ago, Luz Pena learned that she had breast cancer. The advice she got from her doctor, just rest. Because the treatments were hard, they told me you just need to sleep and relax. 10 years later, Luz learned that she had ovarian cancer. The recommendation now was exercise, be active, walk, that's going to be your best medicine. The benefits of exercise in both treating and preventing cancer have been known since the 1970s, and recent studies have further established the link between physical activity and a lower risk of many cancers. We have outstanding epidemiologic evidence that tells us that exercise causes about a 10 to 20 percent reduction in the onset of seven different common cancers, including breast, colon, endometrial, bladder, kidney, esophageal, and stomach cancers. Exercise oncology is a new frontier. Researchers throughout the world are adding insight into how much exercise is right for each patient and why it works. Exercise affects so many different body systems. It affects the immune system. It affects metabolism. It affects the cardiovascular system. It affects the pulmonary system. It affects the digestive system. It affects the musculoskeletal system. And all of these things are affected by all of these new cancer drugs. Exercise could be a constant that helps us to control the side effects that we don't even know about yet from newer cancer drugs. To get up and move, to me, is like the single most important thing you could do for yourself while you're undergoing treatment. Swimmer and three-time cancer survivor Susan Helmrich has had eight cancer-related surgeries and has gotten back in the water after each one hard as it is, if you have chemo or radiation or surgery, you're tired. Your body has been through a lot and it's really hard to say, I'm going to get up and go running. You don't have to do that, but you have to move. And for me, it was swimming. Patients of all ages and fitness see their quality of life improves with exercise. Radiation as well as chemotherapy can be incredibly fatiguing. The biggest gains are really, we think, from the sofa to the sidewalk. And when you do that, you may very well find that your energy improves, that you're able to tolerate your treatment better and have an easier time getting through it. The best cancer treatment in the world is useless if you can't get through the cancer treatment. Not long ago, cancer patients in rehab were advised to exercise after surgery and radiation. Today, leading cancer centers urge patients to be active during treatment and even before their cancer regimens begin in what are called prehab programs. The term prehab was very new in medicine and in oncology. Essentially, we're going in early, soon after diagnosis, to evaluate patients' level of function. Prehab programs may include any combination of physical activity, exercise, 
uh, nutrition optimization, and um, also very important mental health and, and well-being. Across the cancer care continuum, the total number of studies linking exercise and positive outcomes has grown to over 15,000 in less than two decades. For at least three cancers, it's probably going to grow as we do uh, more research and we have more information. We're learning that you could reduce the chance of the cancer coming back. And this may be as high as 30 or 40 percent or higher if we get the right amount of exercise. Research is also starting to show how much exercise is needed to stay cancer-free. Specificity is important because we don't tell people to just go get some chemotherapy. We don't tell people just go get some radiation. We tell them we're going to give you these specific drugs on these specific days, at this specific interval, at this specific dose, and we need to dose exercise similarly, precisely, like a medicine because it has that kind of potent effect. The American College of Sports Medicine recommends moderate aerobic activity, 150 to 300 minutes a week, and resistance exercise twice weekly. We were taught for a long time that muscles are important so we can lift things, which is true. But it turns out that when we're contracting our muscles, when we do a squat, when you do a curl, when you swim, that your muscles are also releasing or producing something. And they've dubbed these myokines. And what's amazing about myokines is that they seem to have anti-cancer benefits. The more we exercise, the more myokines we produce. And even when we're resting, myokines keep cancer at bay. They slow the growth of cancer cells and they're spread to other parts of the body. Clinical studies at MD Anderson found that patients who were able to exercise during treatment showed improved physical function. There's preliminary evidence showing that there's improved changes within the tumor vasculature so that there's more uptake of chemotherapy into the tumor. And also we found some preliminary evidence that there's improved immune cells within the tumor also, which might confer an anti-tumor effect. At MD Anderson's Shadler Lab, Prehab trials confirmed game-changing findings originally seen in mouse models of pancreatic cancer. Patients who exercise had more mature blood vessels so that hopefully there's more uptake of chemotherapy into the tumor. Even in glioblastoma, exercise can make a difference. The brain controls everything that we do especially a motor function. And many patients can have not only weakness of a certain arm or leg, but they may have difficulty with balance and uh, coordination. Dr. Chang founded Workout for Wellness, a program called WOW at UCSF in San Francisco, California to help brain tumor patients stay active during and after treatment. Patients love this idea because it gives them that empowerment of control that they have now lost when they have diagnosed with a brain tumor. All of those aspects of taking care of themselves, that how important that is in terms of their tolerance of treatment, but also improving you know, their sense of well-being. Exercise physiologists and specially trained professionals play an important role in customizing programs. Each person's individual cancer diagnosis and cancer treatments give us a direction in which we should move with their exercise programming. So patients with breast cancer, they might want to focus more on improving their upper body strength and range of motion. Patients with lung cancer might want to focus more on their cardiovascular health. At the Maple Tree Cancer Alliance, instructors help patients get back to everyday life. When you're told that you have cancer, most people feel like that's it for you. And I have to be honest, I had two sides. I had the side, okay, it's time to fight, or that side, oh God, I have cancer and will I make this? After JVET completed the treatment for lung cancer, her oncologist referred her to Maple Tree. I was very exhausted and was just wondering how the program would be. Even can I do it? When I first came in, I was coughing. I was weak, barely could get on the treadmill, barely could get on the stepper. I really like how they document when you first come in until you graduate those 12 weeks. And it was inspiring for me because I saw where I was 
and how I was moving along. Dr. Karen Wonders is the CEO and founder of Maple Tree, the first cancer-specific exercise clinic to partner with a hospital's on-campus cancer program. When we first started doing this exercise oncology, less than 2% of cancer patients were exercising or even being told to exercise during treatment. And that was as late as 2018. In Dayton, Ohio at the Kettering Cancer Center, Maple Tree created a new model and exercise oncology became an integrated part of cancer care. Today, Maple Tree is the largest provider of exercise oncology in the world. It allowed the patients to come and to do exercise where they were already getting their treatment. And being that we were on site right down the hall from their infusion centers, it made it seem like this was integrated and this was expected as part of their plan of care. In that first location, now we're working with about 60% of their active patient population, which is a huge jump from the 2% where we started from. Today, Maple Tree Clinics can be found in 60 hospital settings and in 14 different countries. Before I got to Maple Tree, I was watching my energy level go down, down, down and I was a person that used to exercise frequently. Metastatic prostate cancer, like many other cancers, can make it difficult to do the things you once did with ease. Now with the treatment, I'm getting more used to the ups and downs of the energy level. It's like riding a surf. You never know how it's going to be every day. I'm back to walking one to two miles almost every evening with my wife, which I haven't been doing at all. Not all hospitals have programs like Maple Trees, and not all doctors are familiar with the research. The barriers that we see in implementing a program like Maple Tree, number one is cost. This is not yet reimbursable by insurance. And even though we have data to show that there's healthcare utilization savings and cost savings associated with our program, it still is a cost to the hospital to put in the program, to staff the program, and to make it available for their patients. Finding cancer exercise programs and trained specialists isn't always easy. Right now, there's a dearth of those programs, and it's a total patchwork quilt. If you live in a particular setting that is kind of a mid-sized city, the likelihood that you're going to have some kind of exercise oncology programming is greater than if you live in a great big city or if you live in a rural setting, and we need to fix that. That's an inequitable situation. Some people, because of their background or their culture that they come from, are less likely to talk with others about the cancer. In some communities, it's more of, still more of a stigmatized condition. So it's a challenge to really reach those people and get them engaged in programs like this. That's where grassroots organizations can step in with outreach community programs. In Beaumont, Texas, with MD Anderson as its partner, The Gift of Life hosts bilingual classes that include exercise. En Active Living After Cancer, cada quien inicia en el punto en el que se encuentra. They are tackling head-on the inequities in our nation's healthcare systems, and they're pointing the way to creative solutions. That means overcoming the obstacles that they face, whether it's childcare, transportation, uh, even many times helping them pay utilities so then they can direct their attention to being able to care for themselves. And that's where we think this program and how important it is to come out into the community and address those vulnerable, really at-risk populations. I, personally, I know going through a cancer journey, it's, you're just doing the best you can each day. You're hoping for the best care. Some of you are getting it, some maybe not the best, but you're doing the best you possibly can to push back against this disease. And, and the one thing I can tell you is uh, you're in charge of how you live each day and getting up and moving, getting up and exercising, getting up and just doing whatever you possibly can will help you in ways that you cannot even imagine. Programming today ranges from group classes to personalized instructions in person and on Zoom. In Copenhagen and in many cities worldwide, breast cancer survivors compete in dragon boat regattas. Camaraderie, they say, is key when cancer often isolates you from friends and family. We're here together. 
We do this together and we all have a common history and we don't need to talk about it always. And it's a huge boat and it's heavy, but we can move it. And it's so great that you have so much power together. It's the best thing I've done for many years. This takes the breath away from me. If a cancer survivor says, you know, I want to exercise more, but I just hate going to the gym. I don't say, well, you need to go to the gym. I say, what do you like to do? It's very important to factor in the person's enjoyment and willingness and what they're motivated to do in order to build some lasting behavior change. At MD Anderson, educators at Active Living After Cancer, or ALAC, give patients pedometers to track their walking. Luz started at 345 steps daily. The health educator told me 10,000 steps is the goal. And in my mind, per month, 346 to 10,000 steps, how can we do that? A breakthrough came when she was told to set a goal. Running one block, running two blocks, that's good. But then running a 5K, running a 10K, and then going through the half marathon took me a whole year. So that was month over month over month. It's a little overwhelming at times to be dealing with it. You know, just it comes when it comes and, uh, you know, career stops in its tracks, everything changes. Kathy began working with her trainer, Beth Kamsky, as part of a study at the Penn State Cancer Center. Metastatic breast cancer is a lifelong diagnosis. It, it does not go away. She has never, never stopped trying. Her exercise has gone from using bands and walking long distances to having to do exercises in the chair and some light stretching. It is absolutely unnecessary to go out and buy a bunch of equipment if you want to start exercising. There are things at home that you can use, soup cans, water bottles, jugs of milk. There's better outcomes with exercise and it just helps so much mentally too. I'm not gonna stop now because cancer is in the way. I think a lot of people still believe that exercise is incompatible with having a cancer diagnosis and we really need to change that. Exercise guidelines for cancer patients have been published by several of the most prestigious medical groups in the world. The American College of Sports Medicine, the American Cancer Society, and the American Society of Clinical Oncology. It is so important that this not just be a UCSF or a specific institution that is championing it. This has to be every institution that takes care of cancer patients. I don't want to sound like Pollyanna, and I don't want to sound like, oh, cancer, you know, made my life better, because it didn't. But you have to get through the darkness and you have to get through the hard stuff. Most people will come out the other end, but getting through it is hard. You've got to push yourself and you have to know that taking good care of yourself and pushing yourself through it is going to be the best thing you can do. Cancer tries to break you and trick you into giving up. Like many of you, I was sapped of all my energy and confidence. If I can leave you with one thought, it's take the risk, get moving, start slow, set small goals, pace yourself, and then pat yourself on the back. Can I do today what I did on the ice in 1984? <laughs> no way, but I can move and you can too. And for all of us, it's different. Whether you skate or swim or walk, whatever it is, <laughs> you know, just get up, get out, Get active and you'll be amazed at how much better you feel.